Well, I, w- I would like to discuss a, a movie I saw last night in the room. Ooh. Okay. I saw a movie um, at that fine hotel that we're not naming because we're all scared that this is going to be just, right. just thousands of fans outside the hotel uh, hoping for a glimpse of you and I oh, and Norton. I'll have to hang a baby out the window and then molest it. <laughs> <laughs> Pull him back in like a little bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> that, is the, that is the worst. Well, you don't want to part those big red curtains and hang a baby out the window, do you? <laughs> they are just big red curtains. They certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so I watched a, a movie in the room, and uh, it was pretty good. the The only down part of it is I I kind of knew the ending, but the movie as, on the whole, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I actually liked it, and I I think if I didn't know the ending, I would have thought it was a very very good movie. I would have been like, wow, that that, that really cool movie. You saw Million Dollar Baby? No, nope, because I didn't see I, that one. I know I gave away the ending to that movie. You absolutely didn't give away the ending to that movie. I did? No. You Why? absolutely didn't give away the ending. Why? You were so vague, I have no clue what you're talking about. And by the time the end of the movie gets there, uh-huh. it, it would be over. So, you huh. really didn't give it okay. away. Because I felt bad that I gave away the ending of that movie. I, That's up for an Oscar. I have no idea what the ending of that movie is based on what you said. All right. What's wrong? This is. I'm, I'm not trying to just... You, I, this is annoying me so much, I want to spit in somebody's face. What is it? You, what you, this way they're talking, tossing Delgado under the bus is All annoying right. me so much. Oh, Rick. Well, hold on, yeah. because what Anthony has to say is really good, okay. but, but... No, no, finish what you're... No, just, no, no, just, but you're I'm, just... Dude, this is what the show's about. It's a cluster mm-hmm. F. We don't mind, so, so go with it. What happened? I mean, we kind of know what happened, but uh, Rick Delgado is our old uh, producer when we were doing the WNEW thing, and we told you that eventually our names would be thrown into this whole tsunami song mess that we've been kind of following along on our program, right, mm-hmm. Ed? Yes. And, uh, you know, they still haven't fired the morning show at Hot 97. I, I'm starting to think that they're going to, you know, attempt to ride this out, and I think they're going to throw good old uh, Rick Delgado under the bus and say, hey, it was all Rick, all Rick, our producer, and... Uh, you know, we'll fire him, and uh, and and everything will be okay with the the world, and but then the they'll bring back the advertisers, and everyone will be happy. They were upset with the shooting Asians line, and that wasn't Rick. You know, they were upset uh, with the way that uh, misinfo was being yelled at and mocked for not wanting to participate in the tsunami song, and um, that was Miss Jones that said that. I don't see how anyone can skate on this by throwing one of them under a bus. Like well, Rick. This is the letter. Uh, I am an informed insider. Uh, I feel compelled to tell what is actually going on. Well, this is a letter that's uh, being sent all over the Internet, by the way. Yes, yep. on hiphop.com or whatever it is. Miss Jones and Todd Lynn had nothing to do with the writing or production of the Tsunami song. The song was written and produced by Rick Delgado, who is the producer and supervisor of the morning show. Everyone involved in the production participated under duress because we all know being what? in radio when the producer says you better sing we all sing under duress what what type of duress how is rick going to force people to to sing these songs what does he say sing or i'm going to rub my bob's big boy hairdo on you <laughs> <laughs> these assholes that's not uh, that would never be <laughs> the call of the producer of Ever. course not you know there's the, the you know we have a bunch of people that uh, send in stuff to us and help produce the show uh-huh. and uh then it's up to anthony and i and and sometimes maybe even management if we're wondering uh, to decide if uh, if if this is something we should put on our show. Could you imagine it's Ben forcing us call. to do anything? No, Ben, no. Dude, I just want you to... Dude, shut up, beat it. All right. <laughs> beat it. So they're saying under duress, <laughs> these people participated in the uh, uh, production of this song. Yeah, and it gets better. Uh, Miss Jones is not the singing voice. The song was voiced by Rick Delgado, DJ Envy, and the production assistant, uh, Tasha Hightower, who initially objected to performing the song, but were coerced by the producer to participate in the project. This is actually what happened. The truth is, Todd Lynn may have made a mistake in his shooting agent statement, but he nor Miss Jones had anything to do with the written production of the Tsunami song, nor are they racist. Your energies are being seriously misdirected at the wrong people. If you really want to combat racism, go to the root of the problem. Miss Jones and Todd are on-air personalities. They do not control what is played over the airwaves. Yeah, because Opie and Anthony have nothing to do with what goes out over the airwaves. Right. It's all Ben. We want to say something. Ben says no. Everybody here just goes, all right, Ben, it's yeah. your call. Um, uh, they, this is this. 
the this is a producer call, i.e. Rick Delgado, who was also the producer of the Opie and Anthony radio show, which was taken off the air for similar antics. Ah. These scumbags at Emmis are trying to ruin Rick's career by saying that he's the only one who did it, and they're trying to figure, hey, Opie and Anthony are bad guys. Let's rope O&A in with Tie this. Tie it into them, right. And try, to, and try to focus it on you, these fucking snakes. Yep. And I'm not knocking uh, Todd or Miss Jones. This is the management, the upper management. This is not the on-air people. I am writing this because I can no longer sit back and watch as two people who made a judgment error be touted as racists and called the Tsunami 2. Uh, please forward this email to everyone they you know. That? Uh, no one heard that. At the very end, it's just a, uh, they, they, they... Please be proactive in looking for the truth and not reacting and condemning the two radio personalities. The producer did it, Rick Delgado. Let it be known. So you notice the one person this scumbag wants to accuse of racism is not black? That's who he right. wants to accuse of racism yeah. is, of course, the, uh, you know, probably doesn't even know Rick is Spanish, but, you know, that's... Yeah. We have tape of, uh, what's her name? Miss... Miss Jones. Miss, Miss Jones, uh, basically, Ugh. you know, yelling and screaming at uh, the, the Asian broad, Miss Info, because she wasn't supporting the song yeah. as she was playing it. It's, isn't that like someone writing a letter saying, well, Opie and Anthony aren't the ones that had sex in a church, so they shouldn't be fired. Right. It's like, you know, I would have loved that, but... It's a pretty thin defense. Dude, there's a massive hip-hop battle that is taking place in New York City, so I think MS Broadcasting is going to try to save this radio show because they're getting such ex exposure for the morning show that uh, if they could ride this out, they will have a chance against... Uh, Star and uh, Buck Wild. Star and Buck Wild. What? Star and... Buck Wild. Buck Wild. No, I really... Yeah. No, I'm serious. You know, because uh, they came back to New York Radio and everyone's like, oh my God, they're just going to clean up. And this is their shot, Hot 97, to stay in the game if they could, you know, save this show. So now I'm thinking they're going to throw, like, Rick under the bus, like you're saying, and then, uh, and, and then say, see, we took care of the problem. And then now they could live off all the exposure and publicity they got mm -hmm. for the Tsunami song. And I, I think they should save the show. I don't think Todd should be fired or Miss Jones or Rick. Uh, you want to go with management? Look, let's be honest. The program director is way over Rick. And if he didn't want to play it four days in a row, it never would. Rick cannot override the program director yeah. and play what he wants to play. Rick right. doesn't make the on-air personalities do anything. Yeah, this just handed to me, too. We just made the Daily News in New York. Uh, who done it? There's been some debate over which members of Hot 97's Miss Jones Morning Show are heard on the parody Tsunami song that got most of the team indefinitely suspended. Critics who say it really doesn't matter which specific voices are heard, which I I agree with right Ant? yeah i held a rally outside uh, hot 97 friday friday to demand the, the the dismissal of the team the songs ethnic slurs and jokes about tsunami victims have also led several advertisers to temporarily pull their spots the station said friday that while the team is suspended their salaries will, will all be donated to tsunami relief efforts they're going to try to save the show miss uh, jones has apologized for my poor decision to go along with playing the song ah Suggest, uh, going along, she was more than just going along. She was just railing on anyone that uh, didn't agree with uh, with her decision to play the song on her show. Of course. Uh, suggest suggesting she wasn't involved in its creation and several sources inside Hot 97 say she and fellow team member Todd Lynn were not. The song was written, they say, by morning show producer Rick Delgado, who used to produce Opie and Anthony on WNEW. The three voices on the parody, they say, are Delgado, DJ Envy, and a female production assistant who reportedly was at first reluctant to participate. We hear Todd's voice on the damn thing. I don't know if it's Todd's voice or not. It might be the DJ Envy. I'm not going to say it's Todd's because I really don't know. But it just annoys mm -hmm. me that they're throwing three people under like that, and it, it sickens me that they're using Rick to link to you guys to try to get the dumb public to go, yeah. oh, that he was part of Opie and Anthony, he's oh, the well, problem. Oh, he must be the bad guy. That's yeah. upper management at MS. That's not Todd Miss Jones. That's upper management. Typically, uh, insincere jerk-offs trying to save the show. Yep. Have some balls, put the show back on, and say, look, it was in poor taste. You want to fire the program director, that's one thing, but don't make it look like Rick forced this because he didn't. He couldn't. If Rick walked yeah. into Opie and said, hey, guys, you're playing this, and you guys said, no, 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 Rick, is, what are you going to do? The, the producer gets yelled at oh, by, yeah. by the on-air oh, talent. Oh, dude, without a doubt. They have no power when it comes down to it. The producer None. gets yelled at. Hey, dude, where None. the fuck is that stuff we asked for? All right, sorry, I'll get it for you. Yeah, the, That's the way it works. The producer's job is to throw as much uh, you know, material in front of Anthony and I, and then we filter through yes. and go, you know what? Eh, we don't like that. It's hacky. Or this is, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. We'll play that. Yep. That's it. That's it. So... I hate the way they're just sacrificing him like that and using your names. That really, really makes me sick. Well, we said our names would be dragged into it. We just knew. Of course. It. We just knew that would happen. Textbook. Textbook, exactly. Well, Anthony, I, we might have to <clears> save <throat> your movie thing for tomorrow, oh, I'm thinking. Oh, God, I can't. What really? movie was it? I'm sorry I jumped on it.
I really can't. Well, because we have Elo outside the studio. He wants to say hi. Lee Abrams, I mean, he, he wore his Opie and Anthony t-shirt to work today. Anthony. Yeah. He's so proud of us. Uh, I mean, he's got to at least come in and say hi. All right. I'll, Sit I'll wait. Oh. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Eric. How are you? Good. How you doing? Oh, man. Why would you kiss him? Uh, Do not kiss me, man. Oh, okay. Why, Eric's how you a passionate guy. Yeah. He, he just loves. kissed Jim Norton on the cheek. Him. Boy, How you welcome. feeling? You're, you okay? It wasn't me. It was a little Jackson. Oh, the, uh, it was the two month uh, two month checkup. And, yeah, uh, uh, and I'll tell you, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll completely torpedo the show. And I'm gonna get razzed either today or after, after saying this. I'll just get ready. But yeah, there was nothing more gut wrenching and heartbreaking watching your two month old baby get four shots in her legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's terrific. Oh, that's yeah. terrific. So I was softy. What can I say? So. Screaming and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but that's it. But I feel great. Yeah. I feel great. I feel great. Well, right. good for you. Yeah, absolutely, boys. Well, welcome. When did the meetings uh, begin? The yeah. meetings begin. Did you get the revised agenda? <laughs> yeah, the agenda. <laughs> God, that well, was who's funny. The, uh, who's the small uh, cinder block we have in this That's studio? That's Tyson Walter. Tyson, he plays for the Dallas right. Cowboys. I was, right. drink, I was drinking with him Saturday night Great. until 3 in the morning, 3.30, and woke up Sunday to realizing that I invited him back to Washington. <laughs> Well, well, invited slash made me. Yeah, I, I pretty much made him. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you're coming. You, you can do anything you want. You can come down. You can have my office. Whatever you need. So. Right. His uh, Super Bowl uh, talk this morning was brilliant. You might want to yeah, get him on some more well, channels uh, yes, today while he's here. Take advantage of his his knowledge. <laughs> of well, we've got a, we've got a full day of meetings. Uh, cool. the, sensitiv the sensitivity training thing is actually just going to be like a 15 minute thing with you and, and the HR department. Yeah. And so it's going to be fine. I'll be in there with you. How come only me? Because they've already done it. Oh, okay. This is actually it. part of that thing. All right. Yeah, What's really the first meeting? What's the first the meeting? First meeting. Really? The, the first. The first meeting, I think, is technical operations with technical Tony Masiello. operations, and this yeah. will be a discussion on levels, levels, and, and any and other technical audio quality. Cool. All and then right. I th then I think that that the hosts kind mm -hmm. of are done for the day. Right. After that meeting, after about the first hour to hour and a half, we're kind of done. It's like playtime, you know, yeah. free time, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. And I think there's a Mardi Gras meeting this afternoon with marketing that it's optional uh, for you guys. To back <laughs> if you, wish. you should never say <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you'll never show up. Right. Uh, when is the big marketing meeting, though? I thought we had a big marketing The marketing meeting. stuff's going to be handled tomorrow. Uh, we have a big dinner tonight, and Elo's got a few things up his sleeve tonight at dinner. Oh. So, yeah, so... All right, cool. It's all good. And no. can we have a tape recorder I, to tape the human resources meeting? Do I have one? I would love one. We no, have one. No, but you, when you go to your operational audio session uh, meeting at 10, you can ask Tony Masiello. For okay. No. Very nice. That's good. All right. That's Beautiful. Goober, but it's good to have you guys here. We'll see you in a few Thanks, minutes. Sir. See you well. guys in a few minutes. All cool. Right, thank see you. you. Elon Crazy Glee. It's not obvious yeah. with the opening. He's never worn this shirt I know. I, I, exactly. I, I, if you <laughs> smell it, it's still like you took out a box. <laughs> Anything for you guys. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> What's up, Lee? Lee well, Abrams. Well, that's great. Actually, I still have a call that I got in Las Vegas. Uh -oh. Other than that, everything is just great. Sure, it's a cold. Yeah, really. Oh, no, it could be something with no that place. So it's, uh, what it is. Yeah. But, yeah. Remember Mike Brady saying that too. Yeah. I think I got the sniffles. Yeah, I've been sneezing since 1984. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things are good. Yeah. yeah. A big 2005 plan. Oh, see, now it's 2005. So the new plans come out. Yeah. The new budgets to back up some of these plans and everything. What are we looking forward to well, here in the XM one Galaxy? Thing we got coming is called. We actually been doing it for. Lee, a few how long days. have you been doing radio? Uh, since uh, 1965. All right. Well, why don't you talk into the microphone? All right. <laughs> uh, good. I've always, <laughs> like, the, I've always been behind the scenes. So right. That's the, true. All right. There you go. Much better. Okay. Yes, uh, anyway, this thing called Artist Confidential. Uh, we started it last fall, and we have the new 2005 season. Uh, we've got uh, Phil Collins and Lenny Kravitz and Brian Wilson and, and Al Jarreau, a whole bunch of other people. What they do is they come in, and there's an interview and a performance. It's like Inside the Actors. It's a direct ripoff of Inside the Actors. <laughs> studio, uh, with, you know, 60 or 70 fan, ultra fans we get off the website, so they're, like, really into it. And it's really intimate, it's uncensored, and really anything goes. It's not the stupid, you know, radio interview where it, mm -hmm. it's all mm -hmm. fluffy. We really, you know, dig in. And, um, you know, every uh, every one of these is, has its own life. Like, I mean, Brian Wilson, that whole experience of coming, having come in here, that was unbelievable in a very strange way. 
And then, uh, you know, you got the Phil Collins types, the nice guys, and he really gets into the history of Genesis and tells great stories about what Robert Plant's really like and, and just all this amazing stuff. Anyone in tomorrow? No. Okay. Uh, today? No one today? Well, uh... We're, we're talking either Springsteen or Dylan, maybe, but uh, I have to get a call back, and I haven't heard anything yet. Today, today, oh yeah, hmm. not during our show though, right? Well, yeah. it was <laughs> deliberately during your show. <laughs> they wanted to sort of come Wait, in and hang out. What time might one of these guys be coming in? Oh, because <laughs> he's going to want a picture. Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, we'll, uh, he doesn't care about we'll the radio take, show. We'll, he, he wants a picture. We'll talk about it uh, after the show. All right, a big crowd here. You know. All mm -hmm. right. Ooh, and um. What I like is that thing they do when the band comes in and they uh, like re-record their ah. What is that thing called? Fabulous new. XM I heard the Allman Brothers one and I, I was blown away. It's called Then Again, and that's where an artist comes in and redoes their classic album exactly as it was on vinyl, but with uh, any kind of creative freedom. So. I first asked Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull, hey, uh, can you redo Aqualung? And he said, no, no way. That album can never be, you know, uh, be redone. It was a moment in time, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Then he calls back the next day. You know, actually, I've been thinking about it. This piece of music deserves to be, be, have a renaissance and have a new life. So he came in and redid Aqualung exactly as it occurred on vinyl, but, you know, with a lot of creative freedoms, you know, unplugged versions, rearrangements, and, and it's really amazing. So we've done, you know, uh, Leonard Skinner's first record and Allman Brothers and Tall Aqualung. And, Wasn't um, someone missing from the yeah. Leonard Skinner first record, though? Mm. Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, I know yeah. his brother's doing the singing now, but... That's true. Yeah, I, 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 I heard the Eat a Peach, I think. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Brothers. That was amazing. Yeah, I mean, these guys really were into it. and uh, it, uh, They bought three semis worth of equipment. I've never seen as much equipment in one place. And it was it was unbelievable. They were, right. they were great. They were really into it. And nice. Weren't a drunk. He's yeah. good at selling. He's good at selling the stuff. Oh, yeah, well... You're not selling property in California or Florida, are you? No, this is... <laughs> so I'll buy better. it. Would you? Well, yeah, sure. 25000 bucks. I have an amazing deal for you in Lake Havasu. Yeah, Arizona. Mm -hmm. We should talk. Hook up with Eric <laughs> Estrada. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> big money in that. Big and future, beautiful property. I mean, it's got your name written all over sure. it. Sure. We should talk. And finally... I'm in. How's the new plane? The new plane is un... Fucking believable! It's yeah. so cool. You haven't uh, fallen asleep while no. I it? mean the sleep. That's rumor. just We've a rumor, it, right? I know you okay. guys need to come with so we can first. We've heard this many times, though, Lee. Uh, well, you know, technically you could because it's so automated with the automatic. <laughs> but that's absurd. Right. <laughs> Sleeping, please. Uh, so sleep or no sleep, it's an amazing plane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We just took it up uh, Saturday. I go looking for new victims, so you guys need to come. And yeah, uh, and again. You I'd know. like to fly somewhere with Lee. Oh, it'd think, be great. You can, you know, yeah, okay. I'd do that. Check your can you shoes. Fly us down bring a like, gun. I don't care. Can you fly us down to <laughs> Mardi Gras next week? Um, the answer, uh, you know, there's two answers. A, yes, in a second. B, I'm not allowed to fly on company business. Right, so right, that's right. A little gray area. I have to. They kind of keep that. So if anything happens, yeah. God forbid, uh, XM isn't held responsible for your shenanigans in the air. Yeah, run into an yeah. apartment complex and. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden <laughs> everybody's <laughs> pissed you off. You gave A and B. You forgot C. <laughs> I would sooner walk than get on a plane with this maniac. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know I have a perfect safety record. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Cool. He takes his flying very seriously. You notice? No, I'm he sure he does. He wants man. everyone to know he does not smoke pot and fall asleep while he's flying. No. And he has a very good safety record. Absolutely. How many hours you you got? Oh, uh, three to four thousand. Three four thousand. Right? Three, three, four thousand? Yeah. Isn't there a big difference between three and four thousand? <laughs> Well, so many I keep, keep, can't keep track. Uh, no, not really. You know, it's like when somebody says they have 38 hours, that's you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's a little <laughs> crazy. That's a little, yeah. I'll stick with Connell. That's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lee, thank you. Well, thanks. Uh, have thanks a great year. Thanks for having us and, again. Uh, only the beginning. Mm -hmm. well, well, I want to talk to you about that property. That's yes, great. yes. Great. <laughs> Looking Anthony? to invest. Our first show from D.C. is over. It's uh, that went really quickly. Honestly, that was a fast, it fast wasn't show. that bad. You know, we got a couple little off, bugs though. to work out, but I thought <laughs> mm -hmm. it was great. I want to thank Jaime and Megan for helping us out this morning and yes. uh, making sure it, it ran smoothly. I want to thank Megan for showing us our first uh, shooting. Thing. Yeah, yes, that was good. Thank you. Very smart to slow down as we yell out, "Wow, shooting going on!" That's that's brilliant, Megan. Slow thank the you. vehicle down. It's like. <laughs> Kennedy's motorcade car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You hear the shot and slow down. Good work. It, it was almost like she knew there was a shooting happening at yeah. that moment, Anthony. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Chief from New York, really quickly. I learned that south of the border they know little Jimmy as El Hacco. <laughs> El Hacco. El Hacco. Was... Oh, yeah, we got to thank the Mad Mexican. The, the Mad Mexican. The Mad Mexican was a hit today. And Andy Gore for my 
fine cups. Oh, right. Thanks, and, uh, of course, Tyson for coming in with his uh, luggage. Andy Gore, what website we need to plug today? Uh, Satansideshow.com. Satansideshow.com. Mm-hmm. All right. And, Tyson, you going back home or what? I got to run up to New York. You do? More day. Yeah. Got to run up real quick. We'd hang out. All right. We'll see you at, uh, at uh, Mardi Gras I don't know. a week from today. You got to show up there, man. He'll be there. He'll be Elo there. said he knows where the casinos are and everything. Play some cards. It'll be a blast. End up in prison. Probably. It wouldn't be the first time people from this show have ended up in jail, that's for sure. Bill would be happy. Yeah. All right, tomorrow we're going to find out about the movie that you really enjoyed, Anthony. Yes, I really enjoyed it. We'll start the the, the, the program with that tomorrow. All okay? right. All right. Tyson, what do you think about the Super Bowl? Yeah, who's going to win? Party is over. Everybody go home. 